Hello guys, we're back. As you are planning for your Viking cruise, if you're like me, I just, I overpack. I overpack. I either underpack or overpack because underpacking doesn't happen that often, but it does when I'm attempting to not overpack and then I just take everything out and I'm like, just forget it. So this video, like the title suggests, is what to expect on the excursions. And I'm really doing this from the standpoint of helping you to decide what to put in your bag. So I thought about doing two different videos, what to expect on excursions and then what you should pack or how I packed my bag. And I probably will still do two like longer videos, but this is gonna be what to expect on, on excursions so you can pack your bag. Right? So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, this is a really good time. If you are in that vacation mode, if you're planning your Viking cruise, or if you're planning to wrap it up and retire, and you're like, what should I do with all this new money I got? Um, you can sponsor this video, <laughs> but no. Uh, so let's just get into it because I realized that um, on my first Viking cruise, I would, I, I, I was pretty close to having the right, the right stuff. Um, but I realized that I had just a, I was tipping over just a little bit too much on the dressed, dressier clothes and a little few clothes, too few clothes uh, for excursions. So that's why I wanted to do this video because I want you guys to be able to get all of the details so that you're like prepared for whatever. So um, so I'm just gonna talk about it from a, a, the standpoint of the Mediterranean cruise that goes from like Santorini, um, you know, Athens across to Venice and what to expect on the excursions and how that kind of impacts your packing. So. The very first thing that I will say is that across the board, there's a lot, a lot of walking. And I think one of the things you want to consider is the source when you make judgments about distance. I learned this from my New York friends. When they say it's close, it's really not close, okay? Um, so when you are looking at the excursions and you see things like moderation or moderate to intense, for me, moderate was pretty, pretty good, pretty good amount of activity and walking and intensity. And um, now I will say that I went on this cruise probably within six months of having a major heart surgery. And I give you guys that context because you might say, oh my gosh, well, she's older than me or she's younger than me or she whatever, or looks out of shape, in shape. But I like to give you frame of reference so that you can kind of decide where, where you fall in that. But I will say that for me, um, Santorini, for instance, they don't really tell you a few things on the excursion. So I wanna just kind of like break that one down. It's very, very, very rugged, hilly, long, long um, walk uphill, even from the point that the uh, Viking cruise drops you off. So for me, I was really trying to weigh out um, on that very first day um, how to have the outfits and the looks that I wanted because I didn't want to just dress like a tourist or like a person who's like on a fitness, you know, cruise. So you want to have like some nice outfits on, but I kind of got over that by day two. I will say that in Santorini, I, we had like white outfits and had those on, had a backpack with a change of clothes. And I got some really good pictures up at the top, um, looking over the ocean, but I, completely, completely moved to a different clothing strategy for the rest of the excursions, which is why I'm doing this video about what to pack with the excursions as the guidelines. 
So for me, I realized that I could have lived every excursion in an outfit that included black leggings and a thin, like layered, you know, long sleeve shirt that could be um, layered with a, a windbreaker or something like that. So the things that I feel like were the most important for me was a really good pair of tennis shoes. Um, not the cute Converse, like that make your outfit, but like Hoka's or a really good sturdy form fitting tennis shoe because you're doing a lot of walking. I also disregarded like if the shoe had to be perfectly coordinated with my outfit. I did that by like day two also, but I brought a couple of different pairs of tennis shoes. I also had like Tory Burch flats and some other shoes and I really didn't wear the flip-flops at all. Um, it just didn't, it just wasn't practical. It didn't make sense to have flip-flops on at any point on the excursions. So um, it would have been okay to maybe carry them in my backpack and once we got to a point that we were maybe having lunch. But at that point you realize you're in Europe and people are pretty much all wearing a, a sensible walking shoe. So get your shoes, start with your shoes. And, and I would say, and then we work ourselves our way up. Um, for me, I had a pair of leggings that I really liked and I only brought one. And that's why I'm saying, I think that at least one other pair of, of a legging or something really comfortable like that would have been a great addition. Um, I did on at least one trip, I did use the laundry and I'll definitely talk about that. I highly recommend it. I've never done that before. And I was thinking this was so smart. Um, the other thing is I really didn't have a pullover windbreaker, like just a zipper type thing. Um, that was light. Uh, so I would recommend a zipper windbreaker with pockets, preferably some that zip. So if you want to put something in it and know it's not going to fall out, something with a hood because it goes in and out of rain uh, quite a bit, that would be in my top excursion outfit um, list. And then two accessories, one that I had, actually three accessories, two that I had and one I didn't is that I have a cell phone case that opens up and it includes room for ID, credit card, a um, couple of other things, it zips, you can put a few coins or euros in it, but it also has the cord, like the strap where you can put it around your neck. That, oh, amazing. Of course we do cross bodies, that's perfect too, but this was even lighter so much easier to like move around with because you're not really spending that much money. So I just, I love it. I, I overuse it. I mean, I have so many different handbags and I'm literally walking around with this thing now. Um, but the other piece is that I bought a remote button for my cell phone that I can touch from wherever I am and, and it will, uh, remotely will turn my camera on so it can take pictures, I can film, I can hit the video button. It saves you from having to ask people all day long to take pictures of you and you can just prop your phone up, get your pictures in and it's absolutely amazing. And if I remember to put the link in the bio or you can ask me about it and I will send you guys what it, uh, what I use. It's a quick app and a download and it just is amazing and makes vacation so much more fun and you have so many more pictures. But the third accessory that I would pack that I didn't have myself is a walking stick. So I saw a lot of people walking when we were doing the hill and I thought that they were just maybe like um, a little older or maybe it had something that they were still recovering from until like later on that night in the lounge, I saw some of those same people and they were like out on the dance floor. And I was like, oh. Yeah. And so I would say, I'm not a, I'm not a hiker, but I would have packed a, a walking stick because sometimes you're just standing there and you might want something to like kind of lean on while you're listening to the tour guide, you know, talking it up and giving you all the great history on each of the places. So, so far we have like shoes, a couple of pairs of leggings, pullover, something with a light hood on it. 
An umbrella is a great thing to have. I believe that they give you some in your room, but a little small umbrella won't hurt anybody. And then the cell phone that doubles as like a necklace, which is great. Of course, if you're um, not carrying a purse, your husband's gonna be on his own or your boyfriend. So I also will have a backpack and keep it really light, but that way if I buy something, I don't have to like carry the with the tote handles for the rest of the day. So start out light. If I add stuff, that's great. And then those walking sticks. So I thought those were amazing. Uh, sunglasses are an absolute, absolute must. And then for me, it's going to be crazy, but I like to bring a little like tissue. Because there were a couple of places that didn't have toilet paper, they run out of toilet paper, and like every woman in the line was like, I've got my own. And I was like, see, right, they subscribed to my channel. So those are some of my tips on what to pack and what to expect on the excursions, because it's really about the history. It's not really about the Instagram. So they don't care about what you have on. They're trying to tell you about how amazing this place is. And I think in the right shoes, with the right clothes, with the right, accessories you can even listen better and finally a backup cell phone charger so that you don't have to look for places to plug in because it may not give you the same accommodations that you have on board with the viking cruise because they've made it seem like it's very easy to have a place for you to charge in once you get out into the ports and into the destinations, you may not be able to charge your phone. So those are some of the tips. And if you need something else that I didn't cover, please, please, please leave me your comments. I love reading them. And thanks for subscribing. Please stay tuned for the next video.